The following program is intended for mature audiences. A Democratic Republic of Sports. The Sportsocracy with ESPN Asheville hosts Tank Spencer and Jeremy Green. And a welcome back into the Sportsocracy. I'm Tank Spencer. Jeremy Green's alongside. We are in the Ingles studio, and it is time for another Post Senior Bowl 2022 seven round mock draft. The Pittsburgh Steelers made the playoffs last year when many, me, namely, didn't believe that they could. Mike Tomlin continues to be uh, one of the greatest coaches of all time. But what's the big question here going into the draft? It's the post Ben era. Well, you, I mean, you obviously have to do something at quarterback because Mason Rudolph is terrible. And if you're a Steeler fan, you should really hope that it falls exactly how it did in my first mock draft. With the 20th pick overall, Kenny Pickett, the local the local kid from college. Uh, well, Pittsburgh learned one time that not taking a Pittsburgh quarterback did not go well for them. Uh, look, I'm not as high on Kenny Pickett as everybody else is. I do not think he's the number one quarterback in this class. However, he is the most ready to start right away, which is what Pittsburgh needs. So he's the Mac Jones of this year. Yeah, that's probably the nicest way to say that. The thing that's always concerned me about Kenny Pickett is I thought he was a day three guy until he was two years older than everybody played against. He does have small hands. He can make jokes about that all he wants to. He has really small hands. Now, here's the thing about that. So does Joe Burrow. So, you know, it's not the end-all, be-all. He is a very smart quarterback. He is athletic enough. I think he's a good deep ball passer. And I look at what at how everything is set up with Pittsburgh. This is the best scenario he could go into. With Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson, Juju Smith-Schuster if they bring him back, Pat Fryermuth, who's one of my favorite young tight ends in the league, and uh, Najee Harris in the backfield. There's not really any better scenario that Kenny Pickett could go into. I fully believe that if he goes to Pittsburgh, he will be the rookie of the year. In the second round at pick 52, overall, the offensive line gets addressed here, and that was a that was a point of contention last year for some uh, Steelers fans. Rashid Walker, offensive tackle out of Penn State. I do believe Rashid Walker can be a left tackle. He is a gigantic human, 6'6", 325, needs to refine – the 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 technique there's a lot of good raw in this kid and i do think he can start at left tackle immediately which would allow you to move dan moore to the right side or to guard i i never loved dan moore as a left tackle ever i, it, I never in a million years thought a team would be playing him on the left side in his rookie year and it went about how you thought it would of 83 graded tackles he was 72nd according to pff grade now if you do what I just said, you can slide Rasheed Walker in on the left. Move If you want to move Dan Moore to the right or move him to where I thought he would play, which is a guard, take Kendrick Green that you took last year, and now you have a young line. Is it going to be great? No, but you have talent. One of the, th- one of the problems last year, they played four guys on their offensive line that were not NFL caliber talent. So you need an infusion. Rasheed Walker provides that. There's a lot of raw He's not as he's not as much of a bull as you would like him to be at his size, but you put him in Pittsburgh. Players go to Pittsburgh and end up, invariably end up better than they are, and there is enough raw talent in Rasheed Walker that he could end up being. He'll never be Evan Neal good. He'll never be Charles Cross good. I don't think he'll ever be Trevor Pennant good, but he could be back into the first round talent left tackle for a long time. And I think in Pittsburgh is, like I said about Kenny Pickett, probably the best case scenario for this kid. At the 84th pick overall in the third round, going with uh, some some help at the corner slot here for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Jermaine Waller from Virginia Tech. Well, let's be really honest. The secondary was bad. I mean, there's not a nicer way to say that. I'm not a fan of re-signing Joe Hayden. I think he's going to command more money than he, than he is worth. He's a middle-of-the-road corner at this point. Not the, it, no doubt, number one that he was being paid to be. I am higher on Jermaine Waller than probably anybody you will ever hear. The only knock I have on him is he's really thin and he doesn't tackle well. But he plays the ball in the air like a receiver. Uh, I mean, genuinely, probably the best ball hawking corner in this draft. And you're going to be able to get him later because he is so thin. He's 6'1", a buck seventy five. 
he will have to add at least 15 pounds to play in this league or he is going to get bullied by physical receivers. Now, that being said, in this Pittsburgh defense, I do think that adding him on the same side as Minka Fitzpatrick would make one side of the field terrifying to throw at. Can he get burnt? Absolutely. Absolutely he can. And he's not blindingly fast. I think he's going to run faster than he plays because I, when I see him on tape, he, he looks like a four mid 4 fives guy. He'll probably run in the mid 4-4s, four which tells me you play slower than you actually are, which a lot of people take that as a big knock. It's really not you're more measured and this kid's such a ball hawk that he has to be careful because he is so good attacking the ball guys like that can go into the league and get picked on in pittsburgh i think he would be a great fit be the number two immediately what you do on on the one side i have no idea i mean if you bring back joe hayden fine i don't love it pittsburgh's in a in a good enough cap space that they could do that uh if they so chose and jermaine waller is he is one of my favorite players in this draft and he does seem to be rising people seem to be figuring out what i figured out about him a long time ago a lot of the deficiency that i saw in him is because he was on a virginia tech team that just wasn't very good in the fourth round at 137 overall linebacker out of wisconsin jack sanborn uh pittsburgh has a pretty good history of drafting linebackers from wisconsin uh they, they do reasonably well at that uh, and this kid is the definition of a Wisconsin linebacker because he's not good in coverage. But here's how I think this could go. You slot him in next to Devin Bush, who as of right now is one of the biggest busts I've ever seen. He's been terrible. Yeah, I mean, genuinely god-awful. I think I would be better against the run than Devin Bush is, which is crazy because he's so hyper-athletic. So how do you fix that? I thought that sliding Joe Schobert next to him last year would do it. Well, it didn't. Because Joe Shubert is just flat out not a good enough pass rusher to cover the deficiencies. So you slide in Sanborn, who's one of the best interior linebacker pass rushers that I've ever seen. He's very mechanical. Athleticism is not his thing. He's 6'2", 240, going to run slow. That's the reason that he'll pop in right here. People watch the tape on him and get intoxicated by how he rushes the passer. And he's very good against the run. The only problem is that he's an absolute liability in coverage. And I think he always will because he's very flat-footed. Uh, now, he plays – in the run game, he plays much quicker than he will run. But you get it, you get a running back on him and you are screwed. I mean, that, teams will pick on that forever. But a first, second down linebacker that allows Devin Bush to play sideline to sideline, which is what he does best. But Devin Bush is never going to be the captain of your defense. Mm -hmm. He's just not. I know that's what you drafted him to be. But he's not going to be. You slide in Jack Sanborn next to him, and this is a kid that in the fourth round I do think can start immediately, and you might get a two-for-one. You might get the best out of Devin Bush with him sitting beside him. Sounds like a great plan. In the seventh round, two picks for the Pittsburgh Steelers. 222nd overall pick, Doug Kramer. A center out of Illinois. What does this guy project as? If he had played anywhere else, I think he would be graded more favorably. Uh, Brett Bielema did get better out of him. Uh, but if you remember, Brett Bielema was bitching about their offensive line. This kid's actually really good. And he's, I'm not going to say he's a guy you want to start right away, but he can be a piece. He can be your third interior lineman because he's not just a center. He can play guard as well. Uh, scheme versatile. The thing that that bothers me is at six two three oh five, there were times that he got absolutely manhandled by big interior linemen. Is that going to be a problem? It is. But can I tell you definitively right now? I think he's better than Kevin Dotson. Yeah, I would say I would rather be. I, I would rather be playing Doug Kramer consistently as a run blocker than Kevin Dotson. Dotson's a good pass blocker, but he's a liability in the run game. And it showed up on tape with Najee Harris repeatedly. Pairing the two of them together, it's a pretty decent balance because you just can't run up Kevin Dotson's ass. You just can't. You can't. You try all you want. It's never going to work because leverage is not his friend. Doug Kramer's a kid that I think you could develop. He could come in and start immediately at center. Immediately. Do I think he's going to be great at it? No. Is he going to be worse than what you had? No. No, uh, in the uh, with the two hundred and thirty eighth overall pick, 
Ty Freifogel, a wide receiver out of Indiana. This kid made some highlight plays over the past couple of years. This is the most Pittsburgh Steeler pick you will ever see in your life. Kid 6'2", 205. He's not as fast as you think. Like, you see him on tape and you go, that kid's fast as hell. No, he's mm-hmm. really not. Uh, and he doesn't separate as well as you would like. Uh, the hands leave something to be desired. But when he gets the ball in his hand, ball in his hand, he is dangerous. This is a kid that early on you're probably going to have to manufacture touch, touches for. But how many receivers have we seen go to Pittsburgh with massive deficiencies in their game? And they wind up being productive threes or fours or whatever the case may be. That's what I think he would be eventually. He's not as good against press as you would expect because he is a big physical looking kid. Uh, but there's enough raw here that that taking him at the back end of the seventh round, him going into Pittsburgh, which is a system that I trust. I, I could see this being a steal three years down the line. Well, this class has everything for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Get a little help on the offense with a with with a, a late round weapon. You get some offensive line help as well. Rasheed Walker could, as you said, could be a uh, could be an immediate starter there. And of course, the quarterback at number twenty overall, Kenny Pickett, could be it could set the stage for uh, you know for Mike Tomlin to continue the reign without Ben. It's the best possible scenario for Pittsburgh at quarterback. If you agree with these picks, if you don't agree with these picks, feel free to put them in the comments. If there's somebody you would like to know how they fit with the Pittsburgh Steelers, you can also comment that. I answer those every single day, and it is me answering them. Uh, this is the first of three mock drafts that I do. This one post Senior Bowl. There will be another one after the combine and free agency kind of settles down and another that comes out the two days directly before the April 28th, 2022 NFL Draft. And we will have all your team-by-team content right here in the Sportsocracy. Our seven-round mock drafts post-senior bowl continue. Just hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to share it out with your friends as well. Tell them their team will be covered too. I'm Tank Spencer. He's Jeremy Green, and we will see you next time.